Hello, uh, welcome to another piano lesson with uh, Richard Yang. Today I'm going to talk about Departure from Hunter x Hunter. Is it Hunter x Hunter or Hunter x Hunter? I, I don't know. Uh, by Animans. And just note that this is uh, different than the uh, Departures from uh, Guilty Crown, which uh, I released the, uh, the, the piano lesson on that one separate, way, way before this. So this is uh, uh, the new Departure. Anyway. Uh, so in the description below, you will find the link to the sheet music from Animans store as well as the link to my performance. Uh, so this piece has uh, it's a pretty upbeat, and there are uh, two gears on this, right? So the uh, the first one from the beginning, you have a, a quarter note at 140, and later on it speeds up a little little bit to 154. Um, so just make sure you understand that the uh, the, the tempo does change uh, midway. And so you need to be pretty convinced on uh, you know the, the you know your gear selection you know gear one gear two okay uh, so I'll go from the oh well, another note is that uh, you know most of the elements pieces I've played so far uh, they all feel very I wouldn't say they feel classical because I'm classical uh, my background is classical uh, so most things I've played so far they feel pretty classical. But this one feels distinctively not classical. Okay, so just something to uh, uh, keep in mind. So uh, from the beginning, uh, so. I'll go even slower. Uh, I'll go over the notes first. Uh, there will be a whole lot more to talk about, uh, you know, after the uh, beginning. I just know it's supposed to be simple. I'm just gonna give you a, a couple of uh, pointers. So on the first line, last measure. So uh, right. here, the fingering, I use this. So hopefully you can you can uh, get used to it. actually not a melody so you need to bring out your second finger not the pinky so can you do that That it, uh, it it doesn't feel classical at all. It's uh, because 
in classical, you, I don't know, it's not really, it's pretty rare that you would, you know, play like this, right? It ends with a, on the off beat. That, that's a pretty strange. So, um, so the, the, the rhythm is something that you need to listen to the original recording a lot uh, and try to get a feel for it. Um, and you can do it, right? rhythm right first part should be okay remember to wait for that eighth rest so uh, the way to think about this is that uh, once you are getting to the offbeat like this on the offbeat you can treat everything after as if you're as if you're on beat that's the way you count right so on beat right the Starting here is off beat, but you start, you can use, uh, starting from here, you can count it as if it's on beat. I don't know if that make, uh, makes sense. It's just, uh, if you have trouble uh, doing off beat, uh, you know, um, because after this, you know, the rest of the notes are, are off beat, you can just uh, treat them as if they're on beat. So that can help with your counting somewhat. Uh, so. You you will have, you will figure something out because uh, each person is uh, probably different. Uh, that that's the way I think anyway. So. the notes are simple but you can get confused uh, for example here right. so the right hand at least uh, this far they all stay the same so just keep playing uh, right and then you have a little melody here to uh, echo the uh, actual melody, but this is uh, only a, uh, you know, uh, not a melody, but it has some, give, gives you a reminder that, you know, anyway, uh, I don't know what I'm talking about. So, mm. like that, lift. Left hand first, lift, and right hand. And I actually don't, uh, I actually use very, very little pedal, pedal here. I left the, lift the pedal off here. Right before section D, so section D. As long as possible, maybe uh, you know. Uh, only, uh, the, the, only don't make it sound like a staccato. Uh, they can sound detached, but don't make it sound staccato. So. And the uh, here, 
the music has a error, that, that thing, this shouldn't be there. So just ignore that. So. So even though the uh, tempo change starts from section F to 154, but from the recording, it really it starts here, right? So, um, and that is a good thing because uh, you can uh, set the pace right from here instead of, uh, you know, start trying to do an acceleration to catch up. That, that sometimes doesn't make a lot of sense. So here is where it calls for some uh, wisdom. Uh, to differentiate between your uh, 140 in the beginning and 154 uh, for later on. So after you listen to the recording several times, you or when you play it for real uh, on time uh, as a practice, you can kind of feel that uh, rhythm change because at 140, it feels pretty relaxed and, uh, you know, relaxed, but not slow, relaxed. And then now at 154, you will actually feel upbeat. Right? So the feel changes uh, uh, here just because of the tempo, but it's, uh, you're playing essentially the, you know, very similar things, right? So, and here... Oh, oh that's too fast. Uh, right? So try to make this smooth. Right? So, uh, but if you have, uh, if you need some help later on for counting, you can actually put an accent on, the, on some notes. You hear what I'm doing, right? I put a uh, top note and bottom note, I put an accent on it. Uh, so when I practice, I play it that way. When I uh, perform, I, 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 re uh, I don't play this dramatically. Uh, but it really helps me count, especially here. Alright, so uh, normally you will play that smoothly, but just for counting purposes, you can uh, make that, you know, accent here, here. So you can, you know, one, two, three, four. is a good a good idea to help you count because for example here right so it can help you help you uh, gauge when you start your scale right uh, Uh, you know, it's a poly, poly, poly rhythm, so uh, you just need to know, right? So that's how you, and after that, you just make the uh, scale, you know, get, get to E flat by the time you do this, and do some experiment on the timing to make it fit. That's the best advice for uh, polyrhythm. Like uh, for me personally, uh, polyrhythm is something that I'm not best at uh, because the way I do it, I, I don't even know if it's correct because the way I do it is just, you know, you start at a certain place and uh, uh, know that where you when you need to end it, feel, just make sure you even out the notes to fit that into the time frame that you need. And that's how that's really how, how I do it uh, for polyrhythm. I, I personally don't know if there's a better, easier way to uh, do that. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know, but that's uh, how I do it. So uh, make it even, of course. All right, so one more time. So now, 
section F. Uh, so very similar uh, to before, but because it's now 154, it feels a lot more upbeat, but uh, for the purpose of a demonstration, I'll still play this slowly. <laughs> confusing a uh, little section so just watch carefully together um, uh, because there it's not difficult enough to have to to you know have two separate hands so uh, that might, might be better so one, one last time slowly in time but uh, I'll teach you how to count this properly <laughs> right? so the magic you know that you need to use your left hand as the uh, as your uh, foundation on the on the rhythm so da, da, da. Basic rhythm here. And you feel 
even the notes uh, otherwise, uh, right? So here you want to make sure you can cover two quarter notes. to uh, uh, teach but once you get a hang of it uh, you just need to play it right once you get that feel then you can play right so and I actually don't count in triplets meaning I actually don't count it that way I simply because this is extremely fast, so I just do. I just aim to start here and here. Alright, so hopefully that makes some sense. Uh, Alright, so section I. Uh, section I can be very confusing. There, there's no way around it. Just practice and practice. This one, you just uh, you can separate hands somewhat because uh, the right hand is the same, right? Right. So the uh, so the left hand is uh, what's a little busy, and you you only you also have the uh, other than melody, you also have the accompaniment. So it can get confusing, so the only way is to play it very, very slowly. to cover the uh, A uh, flat. So here, it, there's a very, very big jump here. B flat and it's a very uh, uh, you know it's a black key with some spacing between so it's probably uh, not too uh, easy to miss so that's the comforting part but it is a big jump so one more time Here is slightly awkward, but uh, it's the same idea. As long as you can keep all the fingers locked up in the same, uh, uh, you know, in sync, you're okay. So one more time, uh, and before, right before that, make sure every note is clearly heard. Right. So. 
do not if you it's a uh, most people will probably play this uh, uh right no you need to make everything clear Again, you want to set the pace with your left hand, right? Because it's a it's not polyrhythm on the left hand. And the left hand is a straight time. So one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Right. So let so make sure you can play the left hand straight time on time every time. Then you can think about the right hand. So left hand one more time. Note the uh, the fingering. Right. So notes wise, it's a uh, pretty straightforward. difficult when you try to marry the two hands together so remember uh, when I talked about the left hand keeping the pace right so keep it that way uh, the, the goal is to practice this starting with this and, and here so you need to fiddle with the, the speed of uh, you know keep the left hand constant and you know adjust the speed on the right hand until you can start here so the way it goes down is like you will go down to your second finger then again uh, and here just uh, aim to play from here and then start again so again playing this at such a low speed uh, on time is extremely awkward. I'm, I'm, I, 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 I can't do that, but uh, you know, just follow the instruction I've given so far. It should make sense, right? So here, this might not even be in time, but Eventually, you'll be able to, uh, you know, as long as your left hand is very stable. And adjust the right hand to fit, right? So one more time. For the second set, you have and start again. Okay, uh, so but just apologize when I play this so slowly, everything can sound uh, a little messed up. I, I, I'm rhythmically rhythmically challenged. So anyway, section K. Relax. Uh, th this part, if you don't relax. Your, your hand will get really stiff uh, really fast but if you relax this it's not this part is not difficult right uh, right so make sure your hand is relaxed because 
if you if you're completely relaxed, uh, you should be able to play, keep playing this for a while without getting tired. But if uh, uh, but if you get if your forearm gets uh, stiff, that means you're not relaxed enough. Uh, right? There are things where there are passages where even if you relax, you can still get stiff if you keep playing. But this is not one of them. So so a very good test is to see if you can play this for I don't know sixty set, a, a minute without getting tired. Thirty, you can try thirty seconds. If you if you get if you get stiffed up, uh, you're too too uh, you're not relaxed enough. So. Here I have to see, not being able to play tenth makes everything a little more difficult because I have to play this and jump to here. Slightly more difficult than before, uh, but you, you should you know know your chromatic scale, so you know what note is it a black key or a black key, which is a little uh, further to the front, or white key. Uh, so you need to know, you know, what's next key, right? Uh, white, black, white, white, black, white, black, white, right? So just know that sequence, then 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 you can play that, okay? Uh, You're setting a pace with your left hand, uh, just like before. Is probably the most uh, the strange. Uh, it's the strangest uh, section for me, anyway. Uh, so know the melody. Because uh, you have to really uh, uh, be able to play the uh, notes before you can make it into uh, uh, be on time, right? So notes, uh, uh, sorry, notes, slowly, right here. So it goes, it's like a, like a slightly modified uh, Pajos, uh, so. For me, so this is okay. Next one. See, I keep. I. I see, this is not an easy one. I keep uh, hitting the, the getting stuck here. You must 
practice so such such that you can play this part uh, not in time but you just play the notes uh, uh, you know straight up you need to be able to play this really really well before you can add in the left hand Uh, now that you know the rhythm, the first first thing you need to take this uh, section by section. So you need to be able to play like To say that they're playing this uh, on time slowly it doesn't work for me but you you'll, you'll get the idea once you are able to get play the notes uh, really well and you simply speed speed things up a little right so for example here just make sure you sing with in your head uh, what the melody is right Dun. faster it it, it, uh, it makes more sense so when you practice right just uh, right here just make sure you uh, you know uh, and the right hand ends here strange so uh, again like I said before if you can get the right hand well if you can get the right hand well when you fit in your left hand in ish it uh, you know it's you need to play the right hand well before you can do that so let me do it one last time, uh, section L, right? The first one. Right? So it, it's all about finding a uh, spot to match up the right hand and the left hand. For example, here. some sense uh, uh, so this section alone took me a while to really uh, understand and even now uh, it's not easy and, and quite frankly this you know having played on my M1X for a long time this piano is a little uh, the keys are a little too light for this stuff I, I really like the keys to be like really heavy for this for better control here the keys are so light so it's a little out of control anyway so I'm gonna start uh, uh, the last one last set practice because when you bring up the speed when you're in your in your head you should uh, listen to the melody uh, you should have the melody in your head when you play this so it can you have to keep your pace from internally uh, in this case confusing part to play uh, fingering fingering wise and whatnot it's just so strange but uh, you, you, you can do it you can do it 
uh, but it's gonna take a lot of slow playing practice uh, to get used to this, right? So I'm just gonna, it's just notes, so I just play this through, uh, so very, very slowly. is extremely strange so you must must practice this uh, section very very slowly To uh, um, you know the transition before you get into the uh, the faster rhythm section, um, so you go. Right. So just keep that uh, rhythm in mind. Tend to uh, uh, to count the rhythm and fit your right hand in instead of the other way around. So what, as long as you can do that, you should be okay. too difficult because the funny part is funny thing is once you learn those when you play this full speed it's easier than playing uh, slow actually so uh, should be fine Slightly strange fingering here. That's it. So this is, uh, for me anyway, is extremely unconventional in terms of uh, um, you know the 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 the, the feel of uh, when you play it. Completely different than classical. This is a um, a, a rare uh, a rare one. So hopefully you uh, you like this and uh, and uh, always uh, if you like this video subscribe and like and all that uh, until next time goodbye.